points A and B are separated by a lake. Notice point A is on one side of the lake and point B is on the other. To find the distance between them, a surveyor locates a point C on land, this point here on the left, such that the angle CAB, this angle here, is equal to 48.3 degrees. Notice how points A, B, and C form a triangle. We also know the distance from point A to point C is 386 yards, and the distance from point B to point C is 514 yards. Our goal is to find the distance to cross the lake, this distance here. Because this side of the triangle is opposite angle C, we will call this side C. Because this side is opposite angle B, this is side B. And because this side is opposite angle A, this is side A. Now looking at the given information, notice how we have the measure of angle A and the length of side A. We don't have the measure of angle B, but we do have the length of side B, and therefore we can use the law of sines to determine the measure of angle B. Once we find the measure of angle B, we can find the measure of angle C, and then finally, we can apply the law of sines again to determine the length of side C, which is the distance across the lake. To begin, we will use the law of sines in the form of the sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to the sine of angle B divided by the length of side B. Performing substitution with the known information, we have the sine of 48.3 degrees divided by 514 yards must equal the sine of angle B, which is unknown, divided by the length of side B, which is 386 yards. And now to solve this equation, we could cross multiply, but instead, let's solve for sine B by multiplying both sides by 386, and then we'll solve for angle B. Let's multiply the right side by 386, as well as the left side. On the left side, this product is going to give us 386 sine 48.3 degrees divided by 514. And on the right side, 386 divided by itself simplifies to one, leaving us with just sine B. In order to solve the equation for angle B, we need to undo the sine function by taking the inverse sine of both sides of the equation. Looking at the right side of the equation, inverse sine of sine B simplifies to angle B, which is equal to the inverse sine of this quotient, which we will now approximate using the calculator. And because we will perform additional calculations with this angle, we will round angle B to four decimal places. It's important to make sure the calculator is in degree mode. Notice how it states degree here. And then we enter second sine for inverse sine. We need this numerator in parentheses. We have open parenthesis 386 sine 48.3, close parenthesis for the sine, close parenthesis for the numerator, and then we have divided by 514, close parenthesis and enter. Running to four decimal places, we round up because of the sixth and the fifth decimal place. Angle B is approximately 34.1046 degrees. Let's go ahead and label this in the triangle. Angle B, this angle here, is 34.1046 degrees. Now that we have two of the interior angles of the triangle, we can find the third angle, or angle C, because we know the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. The measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C must equal 180 degrees, and therefore the measure of angle C is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of angle A minus the measure of angle B, which gives us the measure of angle C is equal to 180 degrees minus 48.3 degrees minus 34.1046 degrees, and therefore angle C is equal to, or approximately 97.5954 degrees. Again, we are going to four decimal places because we are going to use these approximated angles to perform another calculation to find the length of side C or the distance across the lake.
And now we can apply the law of sines again to finally answer the question. When applying the law of sines a second time, it's better to use the measure of angle A because this is an exact measure and angle B is just an approximation. We will use the law of sines again in the form of the sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to the sine of angle C divided by the length of side C. Performing the substitution, we will have the sine of 48.3 degrees divided by 514 is equal to the sine of 97.5954 degrees divided by the length of side C, which is unknown. And now to solve for C, we could cross multiply or we can multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator, which is 514C. Let's multiply both sides by 514C. This will clear the fractions from the equation. On the left side, 514 divided by itself simplifies to one here, leaving us with C times sine 48.3 degrees must equal, on the right side, C divided by C simplifies to one, giving us 514 times the sine of 97.5954 degrees. Last step to solve for C is to divide both sides by sine 48.3 degrees. Simplifying, this quotient is equal to one, giving us C is equal to this quotient here, which again we will approximate on the calculator. And our directions do say to round the final value of C with the distance across the lake to the hundredths place value or two decimal places. So going back to the calculator one last time, we need the entire numerator in parentheses. We have open parenthesis 514 sine 97.5954 degrees. Close parenthesis for the sine function value. Close parenthesis for the numerator. And then we divide this by sine 48.3 degrees. Close parenthesis and enter. Rounding to the hundredths place value, two decimal places, because we have a nine in the thousandths place value, or third decimal place, we round up. C is approximately 682.38 yards. Which means the distance across the lake is approximately 682.38 yards. I hope you found this helpful.